everybody. Uh, I'm excited to use generics in Go 121, which is coming out sometime in August. And do I have control over the slides? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a, uh, there we go. Um, weird, it's getting a little cut off. Uh, well, we, we're doing this live. So. Uh, Recently, the, Go, the draft release notes for Go 121 got released, so I excitedly started reading them because as a gopher, I'm very excited for all the new features that come out in each version. And there was one particular change uh, that was piquing my interest uh, from the draft release notes. If you don't know, uh, about halfway through a release cycle is when the draft release notes start coming out. You can find them at tip.goline.org such as that. And uh, specifically, the spot that really uh, took my attention was uh, the part that's on the changes to the language. After we have the new built-ins of min, max, and clear, and the changes to how init prioritization is, is done, there was a bit about this sentence. Multiple improvements that increase the power and precision of type inference have been made. Listeners, I was glued to my seat. <laughs> Specifically, if you don't know, type inference is basically how a compiler tends to uh, fill in the types that are missing from when you are specifying a generic type. So you can omit them, and the compiler will just figure it out for you based on the information in, that it already has from your source code. Uh, and there were a couple things that specifically uh, I was very excited about. First, uh, arguments may now be generic functions. Before, you had to specify every little detail about anything you're passing into your functions. So say you had your predicate function, which is a generic function that takes in any type and returns a Boolean. Say you had a function that just took in a normal function and then with, that takes in ins and returns a Boolean itself and you tried to call it. Before, you had to specify int in this case. Now, you can elide it. The compiler will figure it out for you. And as of one to one, it just works. In the next one, uh, methods are now considered when assigning to interfaces. So say you have a generic interface. We have a generic interface that has a method, takes in two different types. Uh, and then you have a function, a generic function that consumes that interface. And say so you have two different implementations, one that's very concrete of a specific implementation of that interface, or even a generic implementation of a struct. Before, you had to be very specific when you were calling your generic function and passing in a, one of those implementers of that interface. But now you don't have to do that. Same thing for when it was a generic, or if it's a generic struct, you don't need to repeat the information all over again. This now works, or will work, in Go 121. And the last one bit I'm going to call out here uh, as little bits of, uh, of what I'm excited for is that constants now just work the same way they do in the rest of the language. Uh, previously, you needed to specify how it was going to behave, which was if you wanted to treat everything like a float64, for example. Uh, before, this was a compiler error saying you, it was the, you couldn't use the untyped int in that space instead of it automatically converting to a float. Uh, but now, it, the compiler will do that for you. You'll get kind of what at least I perceive as the natural behavior when you're using the untyped constants in this scenario. Um, so why am I excited? Because this combination of features uh, is what was kind of missing from the first pass of generics. And I understand the very good reasons why they didn't want to add these right away. Uh, but what it means for me is that I work on the Apache Beam project, which I, uh, which I was here speaking about last year. And around the 240 release, which came out last year, we added a package that uses generics in order to register our, our do funds. Apache Beam, it's a model for unified batch and stream processing, and we, it largely uses a concept we call do funds to connect, connect functions in pipelines to process your data. Uh, and 
for reasons I'm not going to go into, we need to understand what all your do funds are and register them with the framework ahead of time. Uh, so we added a generic function, a generics package to uh, do that. With functional do funds, this is a fairly typical, just ordinary signature. It takes in a key, it takes in a value, and then you can emit one or more things via the anonymous function emitter there. And this works fine. This worked previously in current versions of Go. Uh, but we also have something called structural do funds, where we use a method instead of, well, the function type, because it's a struct. Uh, and in this case, we would get this uh, esoteric error, like it fails with type pointer my do fun of my do fun nil does not match registered generic do fun, da 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 da, and it cannot infer those particular types. But, which uh, meant that you had to specifically and explicitly list the same types you already had in your do fun signature r again, which is a little tedious. But not so in 121. Everything can get nice and short. So basically, I'm excited for generics and go 121 because there's going to be less repetition. It's a reduced burden on code authors, and it improves readability for people maintaining the code down the road. Um, now, I have to be clear, I had nothing to do with this feature in the Go SDK. I was just or in Go. I'm just very excited about it. Uh, and that's it. Cheers.